So I'm showing here a, a photograph of a solar eclipse when the moon passes in between the Earth and the sun. And here's a little animation of how that happens. So when the moon does this, it casts a shadow on the Earth. And if you're in the shadow at the right time and place as it passes through, then you will see the moon cover the disk of the sun and produce one of these eclipses, transitioning here from an animation to a photograph. Now, we tend to take these for granted. The moon is 400 times smaller than the sun is, yet it's 400 times closer to us than the sun is, which means from our perspective, the disk of the sun and the moon are pretty close to being exactly the same size. So when everything lines up correctly, the moon can perfectly cover up the disk of the sun briefly, which produces these eclipses, and also makes some interesting science possible, by the way, because we can see the corona as in this photograph that we normally wouldn't uh, be able to perceive. So a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller moon, or a little bit further, a little bit closer, and you wouldn't get the full Or in eclipse. a different orbit with the way everything, it all has to work out wow. exactly correctly. There's other moons in the solar system besides our moon. In fact, there's over 200 moons throughout the solar system. Of all of the moons in the solar system, how many have the correct combination of size, mass, distance, orbit to produce one of these events for an observer on the surface? I mean, 200, you would think there would have to be a couple, maybe 10, 20. It, yeah, there's one. <laughs> Our moon is the only one that will produce events like this for the planet that it orbits. And as an astronomer friend of mine commented, isn't it an amazing coincidence, he's tongue, saying this tongue in cheek, yeah. <laughs> that the only place where these events are observable is also the only place where there are observers to observe them. Where God said it's for signs and for seasons. Exactly. And